Hi, welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. In this video we're going to be talking about user properties. So here we are on the uh, API page again and these are the functions that we're going to be talking about in this video. All of the different uh, user properties here um, and the user property uh, get function. So essentially all of these individual um, user property ads there for the different um, types of um, user property that you might want to add. So one for using an integer, a real um, which is essentially a float uh, value, uh, a boolean which just provides you a sort of a, a true or false and uh, the display for that is just a tick box, uh, a string if you want something to appear that you actually type in, an enumerator, um, which is a just a, uh, a, a essentially just a drop-down list of a selection of items that you want to uh, choose between, and then um, a hardware ID, which is a good way of um, linking um, some code to a piece of hardware, so that people don't actually have to go in and um, code um, the particular hardware ID into the, into the code if. Um, they're using different hardware or they're, they're using a different set of pins on the same hardware you can just have that as a user property and they can just select that in user properties and then um, the last function here is user property get which uh, basically enables you to get the um, the value back from the user property ID which all of these have here an ID um, you use this one to store the return from whatever someone has uh, selected as part of the user property into a variable and then you can use that variable to decide how your instrument works depending on the selection that they've made. So you can see here a lot of them have a similar structure um, they start off with a name all of them have a name so that that is the sort of um, the, the main name in in larger letters that appears as part of the user property that I'll be showing you in a minute and they all have again on the end a description which is again is a little bit more uh, a longer version I suppose of uh, of, of what the name gives the, the basic overview in terms of the, the function the title and the description just goes into a little bit more detail about uh, what that particular setting does. So for the integer you see there's a min and a max um, so you can set uh, bounds on the value that they can key in. If they key in outside of those um, min and max values then it will uh, drag it in so if they go higher than the max it will drag it into whatever the max value is and of course if they go lower than the min it will drag it back up to what that min value is. Um, so um, doesn't allow them to go outside of whatever you determine you are the min and the max and then the default value which is uh, all of them have a de uh, default value so the default value is what appears in the um, the user property um, at the very beginning so if they don't touch it in any way that's the value that would get reported back to this uh, variable with the user property get if uh, the user has not actually uh, changed it or adjusted it in any way um, the real one, same as the integer, except for we're just dealing uh, with float values now. So a min and a max, same as before, on a default um, value. The boolean um, doesn't need really anything. You just give it the name, the default value, and the description. That's probably the simplest of uh, all of the uh, user properties. So uh, essentially, someone just um, decides a true or a false, and you get a return back. Based on that, that's the only information you really need from them. Or and uh, in terms of restricting what they can enter, there's there's no uh, there's no restriction on that because it's literally just a true or a false. The string um, again, it's just the name, default value, and description, and all they return literally back is whatever they type into the text box that appears as part of that user property add uh, string will again appear back in the value. So whatever they type will appear back th uh, there. So if you want to display whatever they type in that box there somewhere in your instrument, you could use that for that function as as, a, as an example maybe tau number or, or something like that. Um, user property add enumerator. Okay, this one is probably um, the most complicated. It's not hard to use but it, um, boss, it basically has um, this ad additional um, argument here which is p possible values. So here is just a big list of all the values that would appear in like a drop down box. You comma separate them and so you can make that as as long as or as um, short as you want, really, um, to have a list of things um, 
to select as part of a drop down and then depending on which one is selected by the user will again get returned back to the uh, the variable where it was part of the user property get and then the last one uh, that I just talked about briefly there would would be is the hardware one which again doesn't have any particular uh, bounds or um, particular things that you need to give it just the name the default value and the description again and the code within Air Manager knows what all the possible different hardware IDs are um, and provides you some um, drop down boxes with already pre-populated with all of the possible combinations of that so um, I can show you again how uh, what, how that works and what they see and then you get that return of whatever that hardware ID that you select for that particular function but again return back into the value and then you can use that in your code to say okay that push button is actually connected to this pin the user has said that they've connected their hardware push button up to that pin so that's the pin um, where you'll be getting the input from for this particular function so let's delve into the uh, code window. Um, you can see I've got uh, examples of all the uh, different user properties here that we were just looking at there on the um, wiki page. Um, and so we'll start with the int one uh, and do them in the order that uh, they appear uh, on the um, on the API page. So the first one then we have is int and what I've got here is I've got my min value set to 40 and I've got my maximum value set to 100 um, and my default value is going to be 84 and I'm just literally going to call it int example and integer description. I've done that for all of uh, these other ones as well so we'll just flick through them very quickly and then we'll actually run that and you can see them all all lot because there's no reason why they can't and normally with user properties you would probably have a two or three of them or maybe lots of them to set up um, your instrument depending on what your instrument was so it, it doesn't hurt to have a, a quite a few here uh, and you can see how how they appear within Air Manager and the user interface so in each case here this one uh, a little different because I've just I kind of showed you the example here of how you can use the user property get um, which we looked at on the API page to to get the use uh, from the user property ID that you specify here so this one's just called user property ID user prop ID um, get that property that this um, returns uh, and stick it in a variable and then print that variable here I've just skipped that step of storing it in a variable and I've just printed it directly in all of these other cases I've just showed you that one as a, just a, just another way of uh, doing it but you can just go straight to the print here if you wanted to but in most uses you wouldn't obviously print the value you would be doing something else with it in the code so you may want to store it into a variable first um, before you action it so just running through these other examples then the real one almost exactly the same as the integer except for we're using float values with the min the max and then and the uh, default value uh, the boolean the default value in this case is true but you could choose false um, the string um, the default value I've just said type here because that will appear in the text box ready similar to if you were filling out a blank form you might see the words type here or something along those lines the uh, enumerator example I've just got a couple in the uh, enumerator but this could be as many as you want it to be um, I'm not sure what the total number uh, re uh, restriction is but um, I've certainly created ones with about six or eight of these and that's not been a that's not been an issue um, so here I've just got a, an example set up with nav1 and nav2 as my two choices and you'll see how they appear and my, de my default uh, obviously has to be one of those two so I've chosen nav1 and then in the hardware example again the title is hardware example the description is just hardware description and then the default value I've chosen as Arduino Uno um, channel A uh, pin D3 but again it, the default could be whatever you uh, wanted it to be so let's go ahead and run that and um, you can see here now in the um, the air man in the uh, the create edit tab of uh, air manager that um, a tab appears uh, on the instrument there with all the different um, let's make that a little bit bigger um, with the um, with the user properties here so 
you can see for the uh, int we get the words int example so you can see the description appears down the left hand side here is this is sorry not the description the um, the name here down the left hand side whatever you want to call it uh, and then um, so for instance that, that could say um, stall speed you may want to get, uh, tell um, the instrument what the stall speed is for instance um, and then this here could be the min and the max I've said 40 or 100 and then um, you don't see the uh, description in the create uh, edit tab but you do see it in the panels tab which I'll show you in a, uh, in a minute this description here so you can see there the default values have been populated the 84 the 0.5 uh, the true so the true means basically there's a tick in the box type here which is, which is what it says there I've chosen nav1 there's your nav1 and your nav2 choices you drop down that's free text obviously that's a tick on and off um, and then the hardware example is the one where you get the three drop down boxes so it knows that all the hardware that you can have are all these items here and it's defaulted to the UNO channel A D3 as we told it to but you can obviously check select a different channel if you have multiple um, bits of hardware uh, configured uh, the different channels and all the different um, pins and you can see there our print statements that we've got running in our code now are now printing the results so the, the results that are printed are obviously all the defaults because we haven't changed them yet so let's go ahead and just change them a little bit we'll change that one to 88 or well, you can type in as well you don't have to use the up and down one so I might make that to 0.26 we'll turn the true off type here I uh, will type hello nav1 will change to nav2 uh, and oh no, we'll change that one to Raspberry Pi, and oh, we'll change the port to 10, uh, the the pin to 10, should I say? And then when we rerun the instrument, you see I haven't actually done anything in the code now, and now I get the result of uh, what the user keyed in. You see I now get 88.26 false hello nav2 and the Raspberry Pi as we selected. So you can see how that if you're storing that into a variable, you can get all of the information that the user's keyed in as part of their uh, instrument and you can act upon that within the uh, code so for instance the nav1 or nav2 you can say well uh, obviously if they've chosen nav1 then I want this if it's a CDI for instance I want this to act upon the signals from the nav1 radio and not the nav2 radio uh, and you can do lots of other things with obviously true or false uh, do you want to turn the bezel on do you want it off all those kinds of things so let's just um, jump in and have a look at what that looks like in um, a panel um, let's turn that off there for a minute so in a panel I've got a, a, a test a little uh, panel set up here and this is um, a little test panel from before so you can still see the remnants of the switches that we had in there from a previous video but I've got a um, I've got a, um, a clock um, set up uh, here uh, and I'm just um, fired up the uh, sim and we'll we'll uh, we'll see how that behaves in a minute in fact what we'll do is we'll just turn that off for the minute and we'll look at the user properties so I've got the I've got the I've got the clock here selected uh, in my panel if we scroll down uh, sorry we'll start at the top there you can see for this particular clock that I've got here I've got quite a few of the different user properties and this is where you can see now the descriptions start getting written in so this is a uh, enumerator type so I'm choosing between two different models of clock here the CO200 and the CA200 um, select model is obviously the um, sorry model is the is the title and select model is the description that's the drop down box and then the next one then becomes show panel surround show the instrument panel surround and screws is the is the longer description the bit on the end of the uh, thing this bit here okay and then that's just a, a boolean type one uh, do I want to show the panel surround a ticket if I do uh, untick it if I don't uh, which electrical bus there you go there's a, uh, a a bigger example of an enumerator where there's six uh, items to choose from uh, another boolean one with the avionics bus there um, there's a, an integer one where it's asking you to choose the uh, instrument dimmer and another one for the panel dimmer and then a few more boolean ones here for different functions that you tick on and off another one there for temperature units do you want to display it in C or F 
So you can see that you can use the different functions uh, of these um, user properties to drive your code um, to make it uh, appear in a certain way. So let's see if we can, um, I've not actually tested this, so hopefully uh, it'll all work okay. So you can see there uh, at the moment, there's my um, clock uh, powered up now that this, the sim is running. And um, you can see it says OAT um, in degrees F. Because I think on our user property, we chose, um, yeah, degrees F. So if I was to select degree C there, it doesn't instantly change. But as soon as I um, restart the panel, and it retains these user properties as well. So if you were to start the panel another time, it would remember what you'd previously left those two. You can see now that the um, um, temperature unit is now degree C and the numbers uh, changed accordingly. Because in my code, I obviously put a C in there instead of an F depending on that setting but I also do the the, um, the math calculation to convert between uh, C and F um, within the code uh, I can't remember exactly if I if I do do it that way or whether or not I get the C and the F individually from the sim but whichever way I use the C and the uh, and the F selection there um, to determine which bit of code runs and that's obviously sh changes the way that my instrument looks let's look at I'm not going to look at all of these but let's look at another one that's easy to show you um, perhaps the show panel surround this is another one where you, I can see I've got this on a on a darker background here just so that you can see that this instrument has got a surround around it um, so I've got an option here where I've chosen a boolean value to show panel surround. It's ticked at the moment, which is why it's being shown. If I untick it and then we restart the panel. Oh, sorry, I didn't click that. There we go. There's no uh, panel there at all, and the instrument is just cut out uh, cleanly with no uh, no panel showing there at all, or no surround of the instrument showing there at all. So that's the um that's the panels uh whoops wrong one that's the panel surround where did that go up there at the top somewhere wasn't it there we go so that gives an example of um what you can do um with user properties and um how you could um potentially use them uh in a in a real instrument to uh change the way that the instrument displays um it's just a way of interacting um with a user such that they can um, provide input of our to delve into code and change settings within the code like um, we had to do in the old days of Air Manager uh, before user properties came along in version 3 I think it was. So I think that's it for user properties. There's not much more to say. Um, fairly straightforward and easy to use. Have a play around with it as usual and uh, see how you get on. That concludes this video. Um, please join me again soon for another video. Thanks very much. Bye.